Hi, it's Dr. Chad Larson. I have some sobering statistics in the field of dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, researchers conclude that over the next 20 years, from 2020 to 2040, the cases of dementia and Alzheimer's are going to nearly double. Um, and women are gonna shoulder most of the burden in that regard because um, their cases are gonna go from about 4.7 to 8.5 million over the next 20 years. And men are gonna nearly double as well from about 2.6 to 4.5. And so if you put those two together, it's gonna be about 13 million people um, over the next 20 years are gonna be diagnosed with Alzheimer's and dementia. Alzheimer's obviously is the most kind of well-known, the most common form of dementia. There's other types as well, but Alzheimer's is kind of the main one that we typically refer to when we're talking about dementia. But um, this is really important because researchers, while they're still gonna keep trying to look for the underlying causes and keep researching it from every angle they can, they're probably gonna be left with a similar graveyard of failed therapies that they've had so far because it seems to be just too uh, multifactorial of a condition. And for a monotherapy, like a drug therapy to work is just probably kind of a remote case. And it might help for certain types. I think in the future, Alzheimer's is probably gonna be broken down into different types. And there might be some medications for certain types, but as a whole, it's probably not gonna put a huge dent in these uh, really, really unfortunate statistics. And, um, this is gonna cost $2 trillion over the next 20 years. So it's a big expense. And so what a lot of researchers have uh, turned their attention to is actually helping to mitigate cost, realizing that, you know, this storm is coming instead of trying to figure out the perfect kind of miracle cure for it and wasting probably billions of dollars trying to find these medications and failing most likely that they're turning their attention to what can they do to mitigate costs and they refer to several things, one of them being diet and lifestyle, but just other ways to decrease costs. Um, but what I'm interested in is what can we really do to help decrease the chance of these statistics really coming into reality? And there's another study that I wanna bring your attention to. It was uh, published just recently in one of the top premier um, medical journals called Science and it's out of Boston University. And they looked at something um, very interesting about the brain. Um, what they found out is that uh, during a certain period of sleep, there's something pretty miraculous that happens. Um, we know f from the current literature that um, Alzheimer's dementia, they have a common thread that happens in the body there's a, sort of an accumulation of toxins. And these toxins have different names like beta amyloid and tau protein. And these brain proteins that aren't really supposed to be there to any great degree, it's part of a, just a natural function of the brain. But what happens um, uh, that can lead to dementia is you get an over accumulation um, of these brain proteins. And when these brain proteins over accumulate, they cause these tangles and they start to affect the normal functioning of the neurons and so forth. And so what these uh, researchers were able to evaluate uh, for the first time, they had a group of patients that we, they're able to monitor while they're sleeping in an MRI unit. So the real advantage of having them in an MRI is you can literally see changes in function of different things in the brain in a very, very detailed way. So it was fascinating. Obviously, this is a very expensive study, so it wasn't a huge number, but they found something very consistent, that during a certain period of sleep, where there's very, very slow waves of the brain, this kind of um, deep sleep. Remember, basically sleep is into kind of two different phases. There's a non-REM or deep sleep, and then there's a REM, R-E-M, rapid eye movement sleep, which is more like dream sleep and we go in these like sort of 90 minute cycles all night long and the kind of ratio between deep and REM sleep changes as we move toward morning. Um, most researchers suggest that there's an increase in REM 
at the beginning of the night, there's more of an increase of the deep non-REM sleep. So anyhow, during this deep sleep, when we get to these stages where there's really, really um, low uh, brainwave activity, what happens is something pretty amazing. They noticed uh, in this MRI evaluation that there was a significant um, decrease in blood flow while simultaneously or right kind of just following the decrease in blood flow there is a massive increase in CSF flow cerebral spinal fluid cerebral spinal fluid is what naturally the brain and spinal cord kind of bathes in but during this very low brain deep sleep uh, uh, period of time there's um, a real kind of uh, power washing of the whole brain of the cerebral spinal fluid so the neurons um, basically get this power washing during this deep sleep and guess what happens remember those brain proteins that I just mentioned beta amyloid and tau protein which really significantly increase a person's uh, risk for Alzheimer's dementia these get washed out during this power washing so uh, this is it's these kind of findings that I think will eventually to put together into kind of a a whole sort of protocol um, of understanding what really the, the risk factors are and what we can do to mitigate them from a, a diet and lifestyle sort of standpoint. And um, Dale Bredesen in his book, End of Alzheimer's, already puts together um, a lot of these multifactorial components that generally affect brain health. And sleep is certainly uh, discussed in there, but this is a very new study. So um, I'm sure it will be replicated in bigger numbers in the near future. But it's really exciting information. Um, some of this sleep information I originally heard from uh, Dr. Matthew Walker. He's got a great book called Why We Sleep. And uh, if you want to know anything about sleep, it's a really, really fantastic book. He's a researcher out of UC Berkeley and uh, he's uh, written extensively and has uh, a sleep study, um, has a, uh, a sleep um, lab. Where, uh, where he studies all different types of uh, sleeping disorders and has written extensively both in published research and in books. And uh, it's fantastic information. He, he speaks to this to some degree, but um, it's fascinating to get this study where it was really observed from, from uh, an MRI standpoint. So back to that first study that I talked about with a massive increase over the next 20 years of, of Alzheimer's, this is one thing that we can really use to mitigate this risk factor. Just sleep, something so simple but so profound is sleep. And I think a lot of people are having to or choosing to sacrifice their sleep. And what they're doing is they're just putting themselves on the fast track to this type of brain neurodegeneration. So sleep just cannot be overemphasized if you have a desire for decreasing the risk factors of developing these neurodegenerative conditions like uh, dementia and Alzheimer's. So uh, hopefully that's helpful information. Uh, enjoy your sleep tonight. I'll keep reading the studies and bringing you the information. Until then, keep it real.